Today we are looking at my latest short film, Banished, which was created entirely inside of Unreal Engine, and I'll show you how I was able to do it all by myself. Welcome to Virtual Production Insider. I'm your host, David Stapp, and Happy New Year. This is the first video of the year. I've had a nice break away from you know, creating content, so I'm very refreshed and ready to get back at it. And so thank you so much for checking out the channel. Today's video is all about looking at the short film that I released at the end of last year called Banished. This was actually a short film created for the Secrets of the Luminara Challenge by Kit Bash 3D. And this was an amazing learning experience. I was able to grow in so many different areas, and I've said it so many different times on this channel, but I'll say it again, if you're a 3D artist, you need to be entering 3D competitions like this because it is the best way for you to learn and grow as an artist. So from the get-go, I challenged myself to see if I could create this short film completely by myself because creating short films is nothing new for me because I've been working in the video production and film industry for over the last decade, and along the way, I've made several live-action short films, so I've done this many, many times, just not in 3D. So I wanted to see how far I could take this with those skills that I've learned over the years and apply it in something like Unreal Engine. And really, Unreal Engine is what made this all possible. Because now with Unreal Engine, no story is out of reach. No environment is out of reach. You know, when you're doing things live action, these things become very prohibitive because, you know, you either have to have money or connections to get access to achieve a lot of the things in your creative vision. So to start things off, I had to create a script. I had to come up with a story. And very quickly, I knew that I wanted to create some kind of homage to the classic adventure stories out there like Indiana Jones and the Uncharted PlayStation series, so those became very heavy influences on the story. Once I had all of that written out, I then decided to go ahead and record all of the dialogue sitting right here at my desk because I knew I was going to be transforming my voice using AI. And my buyer, the people who funded all of this, are very motivated to get their hands on it. Once I had all of the dialogue recorded, I then uploaded all of it to Eleven Labs, which is a really great AI website for transforming your voice. They have a bunch of different preset voices that you can choose from and you can listen to it in real time. So I auditioned a few different voices and landed on the two main character voices and I was able to go back and forth and do some pickup lines as I was kind of putting the assembly edit together. And my buyer, the people who funded all of this, are very motivated to get their hands on it. So once I had all of my audio files from Eleven Labs, I was able to bring all of that into Adobe Premiere Pro and string out the dialogue and actually hear kind of an assembly cut with just the audio. I was able to kind of figure out the pacing and the spacing between their lines all before I even went into Unreal Engine. So this actually really helped me kind of know how things were gonna flow and how it was gonna sound. So now it was time to jump into Unreal Engine. And for this project, I used Unreal Engine 5.4, but I did jump into 5.5 for something we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. Now, now, when I got started in this, I knew that this was going to take a long time. And this is something where your time budget becomes a factor. This is basically where you know you have a certain amount of time you can spend on certain tasks. So to save me some time and to creatively cut some corners, right, I knew that I would need to start with some pre-existing assets from the Fab Marketplace to save me time and then customize them to fit the needs of the story. So there were three main assets that I brought in from Fab that really helped save me some time. The first one I brought in was the Temples of Cambodia map by Scans Factory. This was actually free on the marketplace one month, and this gave me a really great starting point for the temple. I ended up removing a lot of the interior items and just really kept the shell of the level, like the floor and the surrounding cave walls, and started dressing that level using items from the Secrets of the Luminara kit provided by Kit Bash 3D, because that was in fact part of the challenge. You had to create environments and show off these models that are included in the pack as part of the challenge. Another map that I used to help save time was the Lookout Tower map, by Quad Art. This is used in the opening scene where the two main characters are looking out over the lake and I was able to customize this scene and even build a kind of overlook area with trees and some branches on the ground and different plants. And in the background, I added some different elements like mountains, birds flying in the air, and even some low-lying fog around the mountain, which I used the Easy Fog asset by William Fauché. And the last asset I brought in to save time was the Conifer Forest Tree Biome by Maui United. This is an excellent pack that has pretty 
pretty much everything you need to create your own forest very quickly. I actually didn't even end up using any of the pre-existing maps that came with this pack. What I did end up using were the procedural foliage spawners. I was able to create a new landscape and apply noise to give it a nice uneven terrain. And then I brought in those procedural foliage spawners to spawn trees, rocks, branches. And within a matter of minutes, I had a full forest going across the map. This was used in the opening shots where the Jeep is driving through the forest. Then all I had to do is switch to the foliage mode and go through and kind of clear out any trees or anything that would be in the way to basically create a path for the Jeep to drive through. So those assets helped me create the three environments for the film, the forest, the overlook, and the temple. And now it was time to start bringing in our characters. For all of the characters in the movie, I ended up using metahumans, and I really wanted to see how far I could push the realism of the metahumans with this film. So I first started by going to 3D Scan Store, who has an amazing catalog of skin textures and even clothing that you can get for your characters. These skin textures are next level. They are a major step up from the default skin textures that come with MetaHuman, and I highly recommend them because of the immense detail they bring and just how realistic they look. And luckily, 3D Scan Store had some really great adventure characters that I was able to purchase and take the clothing from and apply that to my MetaHuman. Now, this clothing was not originally meant for MetaHuman, so I couldn't just bring them into the MetaHuman blueprint and expect them to fit. This is where MetaTailor came into play. MetaTailor is a software that allows you to bring in character models and bring in different clothing assets and it will help you conform those clothing objects to your character. This is actually the first time I've gotten to use MetaTailor on a project and I was super happy with the final results. It really does make it really easy to bring in any kind of clothing asset and apply it to your MetaHuman body. There is a little bit of trial and error here and there to figure out the workflow, but I was able to get my head around it in no time and I was able to take the clothing assets I got from 3D Scan Store, apply them to my MetaHumans and then export them out as FBXs, import them into Unreal Engine and apply them to the MetaHuman blueprint. So I definitely recommend MetaTailor for creating custom clothes for your MetaHumans just because it can be tricky finding MetaHuman clothing on the fab marketplace that fits your vision. So it's nice that you now have an option to go find the clothing you like and use something like MetaTailor to conform it to your MetaHuman. So now we have our main characters. We have Joe, we have Rick, and of course we have the henchmen that are with them on this journey. So the next step was to figure out the animation pipeline to figure out how can I give movement to these characters that looks realistic. And this project was the perfect opportunity for me to try out Move AI. This is a motion capture platform that has a lot of different options. And what really caught my eye is that you could use a single iPhone for capturing a video, upload it to Move AI, and it will extract the movement data and apply it to a 3D character. And I was super skeptical of this at first, but I did a quick test and I was blown away by the results. And I quickly thought to myself, yes, this is an option, especially for the indie filmmaking market inside of Unreal Engine. So I got to work capturing video of myself acting out all the parts. Now, if you remember, I already created an audio string out of all the dialogue because I recorded it beforehand. So what I was able to do was to set up my laptop right off screen and hit play and actually hear the dialogue of the film. And so I actually had something to act along with. Now, typically people record their body and their facial animation at the same time, but I opted not to do this because of a reason I'm gonna get into in just a minute. But it was nice that I had my laptop, was able to play back the audio and kind of act off of that to get my body motion capture. And it was kind of mind blowing how quickly I was able to do all of this. You know, I did maybe two to three takes for each one. And the nice thing is you can upload the one that you like the most. You don't have to upload all of them because obviously each one you upload is gonna count against your credits when you subscribe to Move AI. Now, is Move AI perfect? No. And honestly, what I've learned over the years is no motion capture solution is. There is always going to be some kind of cleanup. So this was a new opportunity for me to learn kind of how to clean up motion capture and what to look for, especially when it comes to things like foot sliding or, you know, jitters in the body and things like that. So there was a bit of a process of bringing that into Unreal Engine, filtering some of that motion to get some of the jitter out, making sure the feet stay in place. But again, this is a single iPhone capturing your mocap data. That is just just that, that's insane to me. That wasn't even possible, what, five, 10 years ago. So we've come a long way and I'm super excited to see where we are another five to 10 years from now because this really is just amazing that this is even an option, right? So again, I really do recommend using Move AI and they have even more options where you don't have to just use a single iPhone. They have multi-camera options where you can get even better results. So I highly recommend you check them out, especially if you don't have access to something like a motion capture suit like Rococo or a motion 
capture system like Vicon or OptiTrack. So using Move AI, I was able to get all of my body mocap, but what about the face mocap? So you might have noticed, but I've got a beard. And over the years, I've tried out the MetaHuman animator feature in Unreal Engine, and it is pretty amazing how well that works. However, I've run into weird issues with it because I have a lot of facial hair. And you know, when you think about it, the facial hair is blocking certain features on my face because it needs certain landmarks on your face to be able to tell what is moving in what way, right? It needs to be able to see your jawline, your chin, your cheekbones, things like that. And when you have a lot of facial hair, that can cause issues. I've gotten weird jitters in the cheeks. I've gotten weird movement in the mouth, and it just leads to a lot of frustration. So I was looking for a way to avoid having to use something like MetaHuman Animator and also avoid having to shave my face. And this is where Unreal Engine 5.5 came into play because literally as I got started in this project, 5.5 was released and they came out with a new feature that allowed you to upload an audio file and it would generate facial mocap for you. And I again had to try this out just to see it to believe it and I've got to say, this is insane how accurate it is. Literally, I uploaded the audio files that I already recorded beforehand. I had all the audio files ready to go. I brought them into 5.5, I processed those audio files, and I hit play, and without even having my sound on, I could literally look at the mouth movement of the character in Unreal, and I could tell what they were saying. That's how accurate it was. It kind of blew me away. Look, Joe, your father started asking the wrong questions. He said that whatever is in that tomb could give someone the power to rule entire nations. Now, one thing to consider is it's really only giving you mouth movement. You do get some eye movement. You get some blinking here and there, but you do have to then go in and manually add more movement to, say, the eyebrows, the eyelids, the eyeballs, things like that. But again, this gave me incredibly accurate mouth movement that I could then apply inside of 5.4. And to do this, all I had to do in Unreal Engine 5.5 was export the animation sequences as FBXs and then import those into 5.4. And when I was importing them in 5.4, I just made sure to assign the metahuman skeleton that was being used by my characters and it was ready to go. It was that simple. And so this is where the real creative fun part happens, guys. This is probably my favorite part. This is now where you're bringing, you've got all the pieces, right? You got to bring it all together and you really kind of put those final touches on it with lighting and effects. And I've actually got a few tutorials coming up about some of the effects we did in this, some of like the gun effects, the explosions. So if you want to see kind of in-depth tutorials of how I did those, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And that was one of the most satisfying parts was seeing it all come together, especially as I started introducing certain effects like VDBs. And this was actually the first project I was able to experiment with VDBs and I will never go back. Look, Niagara has its place for different effects and particle systems, but VDBs are simply amazing, especially when it comes to lighting because the shading and the way it casts shadows is just superior to something like Niagara. And basically what this is, is a heterogeneous volume. It's a simulation, right? Brought in from a different software typically a software like Houdini. So I was able to use the Pixel Labs library of VDBs. This is a website that has a very large library of VDBs at your disposal. And this is where I got the dynamite explosion assets that you see in the film. And these assets are extremely high quality. They are some of the most realistic looking fire that I've seen in Unreal Engine, and I could not recommend them more. And again, I am going to do a tutorial on explosions using VDBs and just kind of showing that workflow, but it really was was amazing just seeing how much more realistic it felt and the amount of customization you get in the material parameters just to really help dial it in. So my number one recommendation is if you're looking for, you know, realistic 3D fire in Unreal Engine, VDBs are the way to go. I recommend not using Niagara if you're wanting the highest quality possible. And so after literal weeks of just working through Sequencer, animating these characters, applying offsets here and there and kind of cleaning up that mocap data, I had everything strung together and now I was able to start rendering it out. So now I had all of those renders and it was time to bring those into Premiere Pro and really put it all together. And this is where my main background really comes into play because over the last decade, I've been working in post-production, editing, sound design, color grading. I've been working in all of that. And so this was like second nature to me. This was the, the part that was just kind of like autopilot. So I bring it all in, I start stringing it all together. I start figuring out, you know, where to cut, where to, you know, trim things out, kind of, you know, tighten up the pacing, things like that. 
And then that's when I started getting into the sound design and the music. And these are the two things that, man, they, they make or break a project. Your project can look amazing, but if the music isn't there, if the sound isn't there to really drive the emotion, to really pump up the action, it's going to fall flat. So I turned to Triune Films and their royalty-free music. They have an incredible cinematic action pack that I used. All the songs you hear in the movie are actually from that pack. And man, they really just help bring the, the intensity, especially with the drums. And then of course is the sound design aspect. This is where we get into what we call Foley. And Foley is all those kind of nuanced, small sounds that you really don't think about. They're kind of subliminal almost. And a lot of times they're not picked up by a microphone if you were recording, you know, a live action piece. So this is everything from footsteps to paper rustling and any kind of small sounds. And once we had all of the audio done, the last thing to do was to throw a color grade and some film grain on it to give it that classic film look. And there you go, guys. That's how I created my short film Banished over a two month period all by myself. This literally was the most challenging project I've ever done. I now have an even greater appreciation for when you see you know, things like Secret Level and Love, Death, and Robots, you see those credits with all those names in it for all those different roles. I now appreciate why those roles exist because doing it all by yourself, it sometimes can really drag. It really can kind of bring you down because you're kind of having to do tasks that you may not find joy in. But I will say this, you know, I'm not an expert in a lot of these areas and I think it shows in certain things. I'm not gonna sit here and act like this movie is perfect. No, not by a long shot. But that's where I kind of see the value in bringing in those people who are experts. So that's kind of like my disclaimer. While this is possible, yes, 100%. If you have a vision, you can achieve it by yourself. Just know that there are going to be times where it's really tough or where you're going to maybe even think about stopping the project or giving up. That's why it is so important to find those people and collaborate with them because it will just give you a better product. Now, with all that said, I am still super proud of how this turned out. And I was actually able to apply a lot of real life filmmaking techniques inside of Unreal Engine to help this feel more realistic. Everything from how the camera moves to how the lighting is set up. And it's all these little things that I've learned over the years of working on real film sets that in my opinion is the final cherry on top to help it stand out as like a real movie. And that's why I'm creating my new course, Unreal Engine Film School. This is a course where I'm going to break down real world filmmaking techniques, real camera movement, real lighting techniques, all these different things to help give your cinematics in Unreal Engine the final touches to give it that cinematic look. And we actually have a wait list right now that you can sign up for using a Google form in the description below. So if you fill that out, you can get added to our wait list and you'll be notified whenever it comes out, but we're also working on some early bird pricing for that course. So if you go ahead and sign up for that wait list, you'll be notified of what the early bird price will be. We're going to be releasing the pricing details very, very soon. And we're looking to release that course here in Q1 of 2025. So if you want to dive deeper into creating cinematics in Unreal Engine and learn how to apply real world filmmaking techniques, be sure to sign up for that wait list using the Google form in the description below. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you enjoyed my short film Banished. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into that and I'm already excited about the next cinematic project where I can apply a lot of the new things that I learned with this. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video and hey, subscribe to the channel because I've already talked about a lot of the stuff that's coming, but we, man, we have so much good content coming, especially our next episode, which is a breakdown of a very popular series on Amazon. I don't want to spoil too much, but this is going to be an incredible episode. You don't want to miss it. So again, my name is David Stapp with Virtual Production Insider, and we will see you guys next time. Oh,